They made the trade yesterday. They sent KP and a future two to Washington for uh, Davis Bertans and uh, Spencer Dinwiddie. What was your initial thought? And then now, like 18 hours later, what are you thinking? Well, first, uh, let's get uh, the new player's name correct. Davis. Davis Bertans. Yes, that is that is how he pronounces his name. Uh, my feeling at the time of the trade uh, and now really isn't a whole lot different. Um, I'm a Porzingis fan. I've always been a Porzingis fan. I, I love what he brings to to the floor. The problem is the availability. And from that standpoint, I do understand why the Mavericks did what they did. They wanted to make sure they had as many people available as possible. And uh, let's face it, you know, Dinwiddie, uh, Dinwiddie and Bertans are both reclamation projects. Uh, on some level, Porzingis was a reclamation project this year that mm-hmm. succeeded. Um, and if nothing else, then give Jason Kidd a whole lot of credit for uh, rebuilding Porzingis to the point where he was tradable. Um, but I, I, I love how Porzingis was playing. I love the impact that he had on the floor. And I, I am concerned um, – when they do get to the playoffs, and they likely play Utah in the first round of the playoffs, that the the threesome of Gobert, Whiteside, and Azubuke are going to have their way. Um, that's that's the thing that concerns me most. I mean, it, it's Luca obviously is going to rebound like crazy in the playoffs. He always does, but it really comes down to guys like Kleba, uh, you know, Powell. Or, you know, even though Powell will probably play, you know, just his his twenty to twenty two minutes. Uh, Bullock, who's been rebounding very well here since moving into the starting lineup. But it, it's really going to take a massive team effort to rebound the basketball and, and, and to guard. Uh, they don't have a rim protector now when somebody like Donovan Mitchell's coming down the lane. Um, that That's what concerns me the most. Um, I do like the idea of Dinwiddie uh, as a backup guard. You know, hate the fact that he's getting paid that much, but hey, you know, that's – <laughs> that's that's not his fault that he's getting paid that much. Somebody paid him. So, uh, but I think that uh, as a backup, Spencer Dinwiddie's been a very very good player. Um, even if he's not an, a truly efficient shooter, he does take care of the ball. He does not turn over the ball. And to me, you know, when you're playing point guard, that is job one. Don't turn it over. You know, mm. give your team a chance to score every time down the floor. Uh, he's not a great shooter uh, by any stretch. Um, but uh, he's he was much more effective as a backup, and maybe that is what will bring out the best in him again uh, moving forward. And as far as Bertans is concerned, listen, he's been a lethal three point shooter for most of his career, and certainly uh, the the prior two years in Washington, uh, you know, he was elite. Uh, he's a lifetime forty percent three point shooter. Uh, great shooters all of a sudden don't forget how to shoot; they really don't. And I, I have to believe that in, in this system, he's going to get plenty of spot-ups and he's going to be able to make more than his fair share. Now, he's a defensive liability. He's not going to guard anybody. Um, and not a great rebounder. Uh, so his job when he plays is to make shots. And if he makes shots, then he helps this team. And if he doesn't make shots, then I don't know that there's necessarily a place in the rotation for him. Chuck, Nico Harrison said that this was about depth and financial flexibility. Uh, how did they get the financial flexibility with the years and all the money remaining on the contracts for the guys coming back? Well, uh, I think the thought process is it, it, this is the cousin of plant powder, if you will, because plant powder was all about creating cap space, right? and just yeah. having all this room to be able to go after one big free agent. Um, here, it's not necessarily about cap space as much as it is about the flexibility to be able to uh, engineer trades to get the that disgruntled superstar, if you will, has decided he's had enough some wherever he is, and, and, and the Mavericks can step in and, and be able to work trades. You have, you're going to have a bunch of guys that are making between 10 and $20 million dollars. Uh, on their contracts going forward. Those are, tr- as we have seen, are very tradable contracts. And you, you, you stack a couple of those together, and you wind up getting the player that you want to get. So that, I think that's the way they're looking at it right now. Now, like any other plan, uh, you, know, you have to find a way to be able to execute that plan. Uh, we'll see if they're able to do that. But I think that's what they're looking at right now. 
Chuck, what did you think their ceiling was, their playoff ceiling was before the trade, and what do you think it is now? Well, I mean, I, I certainly thought they were capable of winning uh, a playoff round. Uh, I think that was uh, – I, I thought that was there. Um, you know, where they're seated right now, they have to play Phoenix in the second round, and given how they've played against Phoenix in the past, even though they've played well against Phoenix, Phoenix is up in their heads. Mm. There's no getting around that. Uh, and frankly, the way Phoenix is playing, I don't think anybody's beating Phoenix. I don't think Golden State's beating Phoenix. I think Phoenix is winning the whole thing as, as, it, as it sits today. Uh, so, uh, you know, that, that's a pretty big roadblock sitting there in the second round. But the goal this year has to be able to win in the first round. Are they a better team today uh, than they were yesterday? I think that's debatable. Uh, but, you know, the thing you know about them is that they'll play as hard as they possibly play for as long as they can possibly play. And you know they've got a superstar who really is capable of mm -hmm. putting them on their back and carrying them quite a long way. But the role players are going to need to be able to step up a little bit more you know, than they have in the playoffs the last couple of years when they came really, really close. Mm -hmm. I mean, came Kawhi Leonard spectacular close uh, to winning that series last year. Coop, how is the deal viewed around the league? I think people are kind of wondering what the heck just happened here. <laughs> 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 what, what, what's, what's going on? But um, uh, I think overall... Uh, you know, they're probably looking at is the Mavericks took a step back. Um, you know, they, Porzingis, I think, still has that uh, that aura about him that when he plays, that he is, you know, that he can be a truly high-level player. But the problem is, and the Mavericks just decided that enough was enough, that, he, you know, availability is the most important ability. And, again, not that either – uh, Dinwiddie or Bertans have been particularly available uh, over the last couple of years. But uh, when you're paying one guy that much money to be your 1A or 2 or, you know, however you want to view the guy, and he's not on the floor, that's, you know, at some point you cry uncle. And they did. What did you think? Or oh, first off, the last thing on the, on the Mavs, have you heard anything about the new front office dynamic with Nico and and, and Jason and Mark making decisions as opposed to years past? Well, I mean, I one would view their trading for Zingas uh, as an acknowledgement that Nico really has uh, a pretty good say and into what's going on here, and, and Jason too, because, you know, in the past, the Mavericks would be pretty reluctant to admit that they made a mistake on trades. Yeah. Right? But also, in fairness... I mean, really, over the last year, the Mavericks have really not, I mean, other than the Porzingis trade, they have not made a blockbuster since really back in 2011. They've not had, a, well, I guess the Rondo trade. The, Ron, the Rondo trade was. But again, you know, Rondo basically played his way off the team. So they could, it was easy to acknowledge the mistake. It's not easy to acknowledge, you know, that you're giving up on a guy that's averaging 20 and 8 and 2 block shots. Not easy to do that. So, I mean, to me, that tells me that Nico has very much uh, is uh, having a, a huge say in what's going on.